Good day to you students. My name is Adin Yoju I want to welcome you to Genesis 204 class. I will be taking study session 5, which is Brella and Layer Production Enterprise. This session will expose you to Brella and Layer Production Enterprise. You will know various breeds of poultry birds that is the brellas and the layers, specific factors of brella and layer production enterprise will be made known to you. You will be taught different pests and diseases of poultry. And at the end of the session, it is expected of you to have acquired knowledge of sustainable commercial operation of poultry enterprise, purely as regards brella and layer production. Firstly, when we are talking about poultry production, what does it mean? Poultry generally refers to all domesticated birds that are kept for egg, meat, or feather productions. All domesticated birds that are kept for egg, meat, or feather productions. These domesticated birds include chicken, that is the commonest one, Turkey, dog, pigeon, quail, goose, and so on. From this definition, it means that birds that are flying up there that are not yet domesticated are not part of poultry. There are two main branches of poultry production. We have the meat production. That is the group where brella and cockroach fall to. Then the second one is egg production. That is where we have the laying birds. Brella or cockroach chicken are majorly reared for meat products, just as I have said. White pullet stroke layer chicken are reared for egg production. Conventionally, brella chicken are reared for eight to 10 weeks to reach maturity. However, it is expected of us to know that the age at maturity could be earlier than this if they are fed at libitum. That is, if they are fed without restriction, if you are giving them feed day and night without any form of restriction, so they could reach maturity as early as four to six weeks. White pullets to layer chicken are reared for about 18 weeks to reach maturity, that is before they start laying eggs. Brella chicken have two phases of life with different rations. The first phase is the brooding or starting phase. That is between the first day of life and three weeks, between day one and week three. And the type of feed that is fed to them at this phase is referred to as brella starter. Then the second phase is the growing or finishing phase. That is between week four and week six to 10, as the case may be. And the type of feed that is fed to them at this phase is called brella finisher. Then layer chicken have three phases of life with different rations as well. The first phase is the brooding phase that is between day one and eight weeks. During this period, they are fed with cheek smash. The second phase is growing phase, that is between week nine and week 18. During this period, they are fed with grass mash. Then the last phase is the laying phase, which is between week 18 and week 72, and they are fed with layers mash. Brella chicken weigh between 1.8 to 2.5 kg at maturity. That is when they are between that uh, six and 10 weeks or between four and six weeks as the case may be, the um, weight at maturity is between 1.2, 1.8, sorry, and 2.5 kg. Then layers to pull a chicken reach maturity at 18 weeks and the weight at maturity is between 1.35 and 
1.5 kg. Breeze of chicken. There are different breeds of chicken. But firstly, we need to know the definition of breed. When we are talking about breed, what does it mean? Breed of chicken or animals means animals or chicken from the same ancestor having the same general body shape, same color, structure, and other common characteristics or traits. Group of chicken that are from the same ancestor, they have same general body shape, they have same color, they have same structure, and other common characteristics or trait. It means that they have the same morphological characteristics. That's what we can see that will make us to differentiate them from some other groups of birds. That is what breed is all about. Chicken can be further classified based on class. The term class is used to designate a group of breeds originating from the same geographical area. The following are the breeds found under each class. The first one is Asiatic class, and under Asiatic class, we have Brahma and Kochi as breeds. And the second class is American class. Under American class, we have Rhode Island Red, Plymouth Rock, and New Hampshire. And the third class is English class. Under English class, we have Australop, Sussex, Courage, and Opinton. Then the last class is Mediterranean class. Under Mediterranean class, we have Legon breed, Anconas breed, and Minoka breed. Classification of chicken based on origin, purpose, plumage, and egg color. The first class that we talked about was Asiatic. Then under Asiatic now, Asiatic as a class, we the origin of Asiatic class is Asia. And the purpose is for meat. Then the plumage of feather color is buff or a pale orange-yellow color. Then the egg color is brown. Then under American class, American class is from America as origin. Then the purpose is drab purpose. It could be for meat or egg purpose. Then the plumage or the feather color is white or red. Then the color of egg is brown. English class. The origin of English class is from England. The purpose is for meat. The plumage of feather color is white or black, while the egg color is brown. Mediterranean class. Mediterranean originates from Italy. The purpose is for egg. The plumage of feather color is white, while the color of the egg is also white. Modern breeds or strains of Brella in Nigeria. The first breed or strain I will talk about is Aboika. Then we have Anak, we have Anak Titans, Bovans, Corp. Gold Line, Hobart, and Masha. Common breeds or strains of layers in Nigeria. Isa Brown, been the first one. Dominant Black, Nera Black, Gold Line Black, Amberlink White, 
Loman and Funa Alpha Poetry Housing. The essential of good pen is to provide comfort, protection, confidence, and efficient production. What are the factors that are considered for sighting of poetry pen? These are the factors to be considered. It must be located far away from residential area so as not to constitute nuisance to the environment. If it is located closer to residential area, it may constitute nuisance in form of odor to the environment and uh, it may also be a source of noise to the environment. Then it must also be located far away from other poultry farms so as to prevent transmission of diseases, especially horizontal transmission of diseases, diseases that can be transmitted from one farm to another. Then you must also consider accessibility of road, availability of quality water, availability of inputs such as cheeks, that the day old cheeks, feed, drugs, vaccines, and so on. Then the orientation of the pen must also be put into consideration. That's the direction of the pen. It must be east-west direction. That is, the length of the pen must be east-west. This is to prevent direct impact of the sun rays on the bodies of the birds. But when they are having direct impact of the sun rays on their bodies, it's going to affect their production. Then what should be the height of the pen? The height of the pen at the side is supposed to be 8 to 10 feet. That is uh, the height at the, at the side. Then at the center or the middle, it's supposed to be 16 to 20 feet. Then you should note that the roof, the type of roof or roofing sheet that you're supposed to use, supposed to be asbestos, not the corrugated iron sheet, so as to be able to control it in the pen. The type of poultry production systems. We have three major types, just like in any other production or any other livestock production. We have the free range or the extensive system. We have the semi-intensive system, and we have the intensive system. Anybody who wants to go into commercial production should think of using the intensive system. And under the intensive system, we have the deep litter system and battery cage system. The deep litter system is where you rear your balls on floor, but the battery cage system is where you use battery cage to keep your balls. Brooding. Brooding is the care and the management given to the newly hatched chicks. The special care and the management given to the newly hatched chicks is referred to as brooding. It entails provision of artificial heat for the chicks until they grow enough feathers. This is done to control their body temperature. What are the objectives of brooding? The objectives of brooding. The first objective of brooding is to provide warmth and protection and protection for the newly had chicks. To provide warmth and protection for the newly had chicks. And the second objective is to provide quality and quantity feed for the newly had chicks. The other time when I was talking about the type of feed that is fed to Brella at early stage, I said at early stage, you feed your Brella with Brella starter. Then if it is pullet or cockre, you feed them with chicks mash. So the, the second objective that I have mentioned here 
is to provide quality and quantity feed to the newly hard cheese. Then the third objective is to provide wholesome water, water that is free from contaminants to the newly hard cheese. Then lastly, you need to make provision for all nursery requirements that we aid optimal growth. This could be in terms of the relative humidity, it could be in terms of the spacing that is required, it could be in terms of the temperature in the brooder's pen. What are the equipment or materials required for brooding? The first equipment that is required is the brooding pen itself. So before you talk about brooding at all, you need to think of the pen that is meant for brooding, the brooding pen. And the second one is the brooder's cage. If you are to rear them in cages, you need to make provision for brooder cage. But if you want to rear them on deep litter system, then you may not need the brooder's cage. Then you also need litter material. If you are rearing them by using deep litter system, then when you are rearing them on floor, then you need to make provision for litter material. This is the material that we spread on the floor that will provide pushing for your cheeks and it will prevent them from having direct contact with their droplets, with their feces. Then we also need cheese guard as material needed for brooding. Cheese guard, then you need hover. Hover is used to spread it in the brooder's pen. You need thermometer. Thermometer is used to determine optimal temperature in the brooder's pen. You need heat source. The heat source could be your kerosene lantern, it could be your, the usage of your charcoal pot or any other heat source that you want to adopt. Then another material is light source. Light source. The light source we have to illuminate the brother's pen. Then you also need the feeding tray or tick tray for your birds. That's the one that you use to serve their feed. Then you need cheeks drinker or fountain drinker to provide water for them. What are the nursery preparation? Prown the arrival of your cheeks. Preparation of brooding pen before the arrival of cheeks. Cleaning and disinfection of pen at least a week ahead. Placing of brooders cage or spreading of litter material, depending on the system you want to adopt. Place cheese guard. Place cheese feeders and drinkers. You can pre-eat for about three hours before the arrival of cheese, so as to ensure that it is being spread in the brooders pen. In some literature, you may see that it is written that you pre-eat for 24 hours, but we have come to understand that it's just a waste of uh, resources. By the time you are preheating for 24 hours, you must have wasted a lot of money to have achieved that. And what you want to achieve for uh, preheating for 24 hours can also be achieved within three hours prior to the arrival of your cheeks. Then you need to also fix the thermometer. Just as I've said that the thermometer is used to determine optimal temperature in the brooder's pen. Procurement through collection of cheeks. The old cheeks should be purchased from a reputable archery so as to ensure that you are collecting the old cheeks of good quality. Reputable archery have names to protect. But if you are just collecting your jails cheeks from just any archery that uh, does not have any name to protect, they may likely give you low quality deal cheeks. The place advance order, that is you have to pay in advance and get a collection date before you get to the archery for collection of your deal cheeks. A continuous follow-up is required. 
to foster disappointment. There is a need for you to follow it up. Ask them at the archery that you have placed others also day and you will be collecting your day or cheeks also day so as not to get any form of um, disappointment from the archery. Then at the archery, examine the cheeks one by one for any defect such as cough beak, blindness, paralysis, weakness, or heat navel, and the rest. So you have to examine them. And when you discover that there is any cheek that is having any defect in any form, then you reject it and it will be replaced for you at the archery. Cheeks with any defect should be rejected and it will be replaced. Transportation of cheeks from archery to the farm should be done in the morning or evening to prevent its stress. Unloading of cheeks on arrival. What do you do? How do you unload your cheeks at your farm when they arrive? Immediate opening of the cheeks box is required. Counting of cheeks while removing from their boxes. While you are removing them from their boxes, you have to count them again. Although you have done it at the archery, but it is still expected of you to count them when you are removing them from the box at your farm. Removal of mortality or dead ones is also required. The separating of weak cheeks. You have to separate the ones that are weak and give them special care so as to ensure that they survive. Win of sample cheeks. You have to do random win. You have to take some of them and weigh them randomly and the weight will represent the weight of the cheese. You find the average and it will represent the weight of the cheese. Then vaccination, if necessary, if they are not too stressed, uh, it is expected of you to vaccinate them if they are not too stressed. But if you know that they are too stressed, then such a vaccination can be postponed till the following day. And the vaccine that is expected to give them between the one and the two as they arrive is Newcastle disease vaccine in Traocula. Then opening of records. You have to open record so as to make sure that you keep the record of the number that is stuck. Then if there is mortality, you have to record it. Then you open vaccination and medication record so that you're able to know what you have operation you have carried out at that day or some other days. Administer of anti-stress through drinking water. You need to give them this medication in order to combat stress due to transportation. So you put it in drinking water and you can feed them between four, three to four hours after arrival. But majorly, you need to provide water first. It is essential that you provide water first as soon as they arrive. And in the water, you need to put your anti stress What are the factors affecting brooding? The first factor is the brooding pen. If the brooding pen is not properly disinfected or fumigated, as the case may be, it will affect the brooding performance. So you must make sure that the brooding pen is uh, well fumigated or well disinfected so as to ensure that all pathogenic organisms have been gotten rid from the brooding pen, the quality of cheese. This is another factor that can affect the brooding performance. Just as I've said, that there is a need for you to collect your day cheese from a reputable artery. Because the arteries might have possibly compromised their quality because they are not known. But if you are collecting from arteries that have names, they know that they have names 
to protect. So the quality of chicks determines what happens during the brooding. Then the temperature. When the temperature is higher than what they require or lower than the optimum, then the brooding performance will be affected. So that's the reason why you need to hang your thermometer in order to determine optimal temperature in the brooder's pen. And in a situation whereby you do not have access to thermometer, then you can use cheese behavior to determine optimal temperature in the brooder's pen. Then ventilation. You must make sure that the place is well ventilated so that they will not suffocate to death. The relative humidity must also be monitored. It must not be too high, neither must it be too low. The relative humidity that is required is around 70%. The litter management. You must make sure that the litter, if you are putting them on deep litter system, then the litter must be well managed. It must not be wet. As soon as you observe that there is spillage of water on the litter, you have to pack it and replace it. And before it is wet, you must make sure that you change it. Then lighten schedule. You need to ensure that you give them lighting so as to ensure illumination in the brooder's pen so that they're able to have access, they're able to see the feed you have provided for them. Then floor space, this is another factor that can affect the performance during brooding. If you provide more than what is required, more than the speed that is required, it's going to affect the feed conversion ratio. If you provide below, lesser than what is required, there will be competition in all areas. There will be competition for feed, competition for water, competition for space itself. So there is a need for you to determine the floor space so as to ensure that you have good brooding performance. The feed is another factor that can affect the brooding performance. Those that I've said earlier on, I said that there is a need for you to provide quality and quantity feed. Then I said if you are rearing um, broilers, you need to provide broilers tata. And if it is cocker or pullet, you need to provide them with cheeks, mash. Then the quantity is also germane if you will not um, affect the brooding performance negatively. Then water too is another factor that must be put into consideration. Yeah, I also said that there is a need for you to make sure that the water you are providing is wholesome water, water that is free from contaminants. Another factor that can affect brooding performance is vaccination and medication. So you need to adhere strictly to your vaccination program and your medication program. If it is not strictly adhered to, it can affect brooding performance. What is the temperature requirement? Brooding temperature requirement. Temperature requirement for brooding ticks at different ages. At the first week, the temperature that is required is 35 degrees Celsius. That is the equivalent of 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And at the second week, it is the temperature required is 32.2 degrees Celsius. That is equivalent of 90 degrees Fahrenheit. If you are rearing umbrella at this stage, you will be true with the brooding exercise. But if it is pullet or cockers, you will continue till week eight, till week six. At the third week, the temperature that is required is 29.4 degrees Celsius. That is equivalent of 85 degrees Fahrenheit. At the fourth week, the temperature that is required is 26.7 degrees Celsius. That is equivalent of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. At the fifth week, 23.9 degrees Celsius, equivalent of 75 degrees Fahrenheit. 
75 degree Fahrenheit. Then at the sixth week, 21.2 degree Celsius is required. That will be equivalent of 70 degree Fahrenheit. Brooding temperature and chicks behavior. Brooding temperature and chicks behavior. I told you that the thermometer serves the purpose of determining optimal temperature in the brooder's pen. And at the same time, I told you that in a situation whereby you do not have access to the thermometer, you can use chicks behavior to determine optimal temperature in the brooder's pen. When the temperature is low in the brooder's pen, you, when you enter the brooder's pen, you will observe that the chicks will be clustering, they will be cuddling under the ova. They will move closer to the heat source because the temperature is low below what is required, below the optimum that is required at that particular point in time. So when you enter your brother's pen and you observe that your cheeks are clustering together, it shows that the temperature is low. And if the temperature is high, what will you observe? When you enter your brother's pen and you observe that your cheeks are moving far away from the heat source, as if they are finding a means to escape from the brother's pen, it shows that the temperature is too high for them. Then how will you know optimal temperature without using thermometer? When you enter your brother's pen and you observe that your cheeks are evenly distributed, some of them are eating the feed provided for them, some are drinking water, some of them are running around, then you know that, okay, this is the optimal temperature in the brother's pen. Little material and its management. As I have said, I said the little material is used in deep litter system of rearing balls. If you are using the battery cage system, you don't need litter material. Rather, you need brooder's cage. Litter means any absorbent or bedding material that provides comfort to the chicken and facilitates evaporation of moisture and gases from the Faker material. And I also told you that little material also serve as cushion for the cheeks. There are different little materials that could be used. Some of them are wood shavings, corn cobs, rice husk, granite hulls, chopped straws. Peanut hulls, sunflower hulls, sawdust, and so many other ones. But the one that you want to adopt must have the following qualities. It must be highly absorbent. It must be a good absorbent of moisture. It must be light in weight. It must have medium particle size. It must not be finely made, nor bigger in size. If it is finely made, just like a sawdust, it is going to predispose your cheeks to respiratory infection. And um, the cheese could also mistakenly pick it for feed because of its size. Then another quality that you need to observe in the little material that you want, to, uh, you want to adopt is that it must be the type that dries rapidly. When it wears, it must be a little material that dries rapidly. It must be soft and comfortable for chicken to work on because the, it is meant to provide a a cushion effect for them. So it must be soft 
and comfortable for chicken to work on, it must be locally available. If it is not locally available, it's going to increase the cost of production. It must not be a little material that you have to travel far before you can get it. It must be of uniform particle size. It must be cost effective. It must not be a little material that they have to charge you unnecessarily before you can get it. So all these qualities must be put into consideration before you adopt any little material. What are the functions of little materials? It absorbs moisture and promotes drying. It reduces direct contact between chicken and their droppings and their feces, their thicker material. It insulates cheeks from cold effect of the floor because the cheeks are not having direct contact with the floor. So it's going to insulate them from the cold effect of the floor because they are standing on the litter material. It provides protective cushion between the burrs and floor. Then it regulates humidity and temperature for the chicken. Floor space requirement. During the first week, what should be the space requirement per bed in square foot? The first week, what they require what each chick requires is between 0.1 to 0.25 square foot. 0.18 to 0.25 square foot. That is what a chick requires as the floor space requirement in the first week. Then in the second week, a chick requires between 0.30 to 0.35 square foot. That's what a chick requires in the second week. Then in the third week, 0.45 to 0.50 square foot. In the fourth week, one square foot. The fifth week, one square foot. The sixth week, one square foot. Eat sources for brooding. There are different eat sources that can be used. The first one is electric bulb, but if you are using electric bulb, you must make sure that there is stability of light. Kerosene lantern. The kerosene lantern can serve dual purpose. It can serve as heat source and as light source. Kerosene stove, that's another heat source that can be used. Charcoal pots can also be used. Then gas pipes can be used. Steam pipes can also be used. Make sure that any of the heat sources that you want to use should be cost effective. It must not be a heat source that will be expensive in compared to others. And it must also be a heat source that will be reliable. Feed. Poultry feed could be made in different forms. It could be mash, it could be crumble or pellet. Poultry feed could be made in different forms. It could be in form of mash, it could be in form of crumbles, it could be in form of pellet. The following factors should be considered for good quality feed good quality raw materials, proper feed formulation to the age of the chicken. As I said the other time that if they are pullets or cockers at early stage, you are feeding them with chicks mash. At their growing stage, you are feeding them with grass mash. Then when they start laying, you are feeding them with layer smart. And if it is brella at early stage, you feed them with brella starter. Then at the um, later stage, you feed them with brella finisher. 
thorough mixing of various feed components. This is another factor that should be considered for good quality feed, especially when you are practicing hand mixing. If you are mixing your feed by yourself with your hand, then you must make sure that the mixing of various ingredients, especially the micro uh, nutrients, should be micro ingredients should be done thoroughly. But if you are mixing, if you are using mixers too, then make sure that the mixing is thoroughly carried out. Proper processing of feed is also another factor. Proper storage of feed is another factor that should be considered for good quality feed. The proper particle size of feed should also be considered for good quality feed then you need to balance the nutrient, especially the energy and the crude protein diseases. What are the, when we are talking about diseases, you know, it is a deviation or aberration from normal physiological state of X. Aberration or deviation from normal physiological state of X. Both diseases, like other livestock diseases, are caused by disease agents like bacteria, viruses, protozoa, fungi, parasites, and metabolic disorders. Some common diseases of chicken are listed as follows. A, under bacterial disease, we have pleurum disease, that is um, the one that is causing salmonellosis. We have chronic respiratory disease, that's mycoplasma disease. We have infectious choriza. We have foul cholera and necrotic enteritis. In the case of enteritis, you observe during postmortem that the intestine will be inflamed. Then B, viral disease. Under viral disease, we have Newcastle disease. Infectious buster disease or gomboro, infectious bronchitis, Marex disease, and foul pox. Then under fungi disease, we have aspergillosis and mycotoxicosis. Aspergillosis and mycotoxicosis. Then under protozoa diseases, the major one under it that infects our birds is coccidiosis. Then under parasitic diseases, we have lice and mite infestation. These ones are ectoparasites, the parasites that are found outside the body, external parasites. Then we also have endoparasites. Under endoparasites, we have nematodes, roundworms. Nematodes are roundworms. We have cystos, they are tapeworms. And we have primatodes, they have leaf shape. Then under metabolic diseases, we have ascites and gut. In the event of any disease outbreak, you need to contact your veterinary doctor or animal health technologies for timely treatment, vaccination program. When we're talking about vaccination, the rationale behind it is the usage of antigen to stimulate the production of antibody that we eventually fight against disease agent. And the reason why we administer vaccine is to confer immunity on our chicken. They have not come down, they have not been infected with the disease, but we want to stimulate the production of antibody that we fight against the disease. This 
a South Vaccination Program should look like. And we, I need to tell you that there is no two vaccination program that will be 100% alike, but there must be similarity in the vaccination program. The one, the type of vaccine that is administered is Marek's disease vaccine. And the route of administration is subcutaneous under the skin of the neck. It is normally administered at the neck region. You lift up the skin of the neck region and it is administered there. Then the dosage per bed is 0.2 mil. Between day one and day three, Newcastle disease vaccine in Traucula is administered. The route of administration is in Traucula. It's through the height, just as the name depicts from the name of the vaccine. Newcastle disease vaccine in Traucula, Newcastle disease vaccine IO. So the route is used to name the vaccine. And the dosage per bed is 0 0.01 mil per bed. That is when you are using standard dropper. But if you are not using standard dropper, you need to determine what your own dropper that you have adopted can drop per time to know the quantity of sterile water you will use to reconstitute your vaccine. Then between day 7 and day 10, you we administer first infectious bursal disease vaccine. It is also called Gomboro, first Gomboro. The route of administration is through drinking water orally. It is through drinking water and the dosage is 10 mil per bird. So you need to reconstitute your vaccine with 10 mil of water. Then day 14, you administer first Newcastle disease vaccine, Lasota. First Newcastle disease vaccine, Lasota. First NDV Lasota, day 14. Then the route of administration is through drinking water as well. The dosage per bird is also 10 mil per bird. Then day 21, you administer second infectious bursal disease vaccine. Second infectious bursal disease vaccine, day 21, as second gomboro. Then the route of administration is through drinking water. Then the dosage is also 10 mil per bird. Then day 28, you administer second Newcastle disease vaccine Lasota, second NDV Lasota, second Newcastle disease vaccine Lasota is administered on day 28, and the route of administration is through drinking water as well. Then at this stage, you can use 15 mils per bird as your dosage. Then day 35, day 35, you administer foul pulse disease vaccine. Foul pulse disease vaccine, day 35. The route of administration is wing web, is underneath the wing. You will observe that there is concentration or localization of veins when you raise up the wing. So you administer it at the web of the wing, under the wing. Then the dosage is 0 0.01 mil per bird. Then week seven to week eight, you administer first Newcastle disease vaccine, Comoro. This is the third strain of no castle disease vaccine will be administering. I've talked about no castle disease vaccine in Traucula. I've talked about no castle disease vaccine in Lasuta. So this is another strain that is no castle disease vaccine Comorov. It is administered between week seven and week eight. The first no castle disease vaccine Comorov is administered at this age. And the route of administration is intramuscular. You administer it intramuscularly, and the dosage is 0 0.2 mil per bed. So you are going to inject it intramuscularly. 0 0.2 mil per bed is the dosage. 
Then week 16, the second Newcastle disease vaccine, Comoroff, is administered. Week 16, second Newcastle disease vaccine, Comoroff, is administered. And the route of administration is also intramuscular. Why the dosage is 0.2 mL per bed? I need to state here that if you are rearing pullet or cochlear, this vaccination program can be adopted. But if you are rearing broilers, you're supposed to stop the vaccination program at second Newcastle disease vaccine, Lasota, that is day 28. Because your broiler will stay with you for for just 8 to 10 weeks maximum. So you stop the vaccinal program at that stage. Rules of vaccination. Rules of vaccination. The first rule of vaccination is do not vaccinate unhealthy chicken. I know you should be able to remember that in your secondary school, animal husbandry, or um, agri, that you should not vaccinate sick animals. So the first rule of vaccination is do not vaccinate unhealthy or sick chicken. The second one is purchase vaccine from reliable and reputable veterinary shop or stores where refrigeration facilities are available. Because there is a need for the people who are selling the vaccine to refrigerate it at 4 degrees Celsius. But if they do not have refrigeration facility or if the light is not stable, it shows that you will not be able to buy the quality vaccine that is required. So it is a rule that you need to buy it from a reliable and reputable veterinary shop. Maintain cold chain by using ice pack. From the point of production to the point where you are going to purchase it, to the point where you are going to use it at your farm, the cold chain of the vaccine must be maintained. If the cold chain is broken, the antigen that was used to prepare the vaccine may become active. By the time you think you are vaccinating, you are not vaccinating, rather you are inoculating. And that is why there could be vaccine failure or breakage in such a way that your cheeks may likely come down with that particular disease you have vaccinated them against. The fourth one is do not use expired vaccine. You have to check the leaflet and make sure that you are not using expired vaccine. The next one is do not vaccinate during high temperature. When the temperature is high, it is not advisable for you to vaccinate. Avoid using chlorinated water. When you use chlorinated water, it's going to form a compound with the vaccine and the vaccine will not be available for your cheeks. A complex will be formed and it will prevent the vaccine from being available for your cheeks. Then when you are using chlorinated water, if you do not have access to any other water, then you need to use skimmed milk in order to neutralize the effect of the chlorine in the water. Avoid spillage of vaccine. Do not allow the vaccine to spill on the floor. If it happens, you need to pack the point where the vaccine spills. Then do not allow the vaccine to stay beyond one hour after reconstitution. The vaccine must be exhausted within just one hour. If you do not use everything within one hour, you need to discard the remnant. Provide adequate drinking point for oral vaccination. If the vaccination is oral, is through drinking water, you need to make provision for adequate drinking point so that all the chicks will be able to have uh, access to the vaccine in water. 
do not use less than recommended dosage or overdosage. You need to adhere strictly to this. Trained and skilled personnel should handle the vaccination. The vaccination should be handled by trained and skilled personnel. At this point, we have come to the end of this session and it is expected of you to have learned identification of various breeds of poultry birds, especially the broilers and layers. You're supposed to have learned specific factors of broiler and layer production enterprises. And by now, you should be acquainted with pests and diseases of poultry production. And lastly, you must have acquired knowledge for sustainable commercial operation of poultry enterprise. So this is the end of the class. Thank you so much.